فذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين صدق الله العظيم سئل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أكيس الناس وأحزم الناس فقال أكثرهم ذكرا للموت وأشدهم استعدادا له أولئك هم الأكياس ذهبوا بشرف الدنيا والآخرة أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected ulama ikram, elders, beloved brothers in Islam The verse of the Qur'an which I recited in the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَذَكِّرْ This literally translated means Remind one another. But dhakkir is such a tense which indicates, like we say in Urdu, kisi cheez ko bar bar karna. Continue, continually remind one another. Continually give advice to one another. فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ mu'minin. Because this giving of advice, this reminder, this is something that is of great benefit to a believer. In fact, the entire Qur'an in reality is nasihat, is advice. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ad-deenun nasiha. He said, My, the whole of deen is nasihat. Anbiya alayhi salat was salam giving nasihat, giving advice, what we call zehen sazi, conditioning the minds of people. أَنَا لَكُمْ نَاصِحٌ أَمِينٌ إِنِّي أَنْصَحُ لَكُمْ We find various places in the Qur'an where Anbi alayhi salatu was salam described this amal of giving advice, giving nasihat, reminding over and over again, human beings by nature we tend to forget. And such is the pressure of the lifestyle that we lead that one is forgetting the other is we become ghafil, we become negligent, we get caught up in the daily rat race of life. So that which is real, that which is staring us in the face, often such is the effect of the environment that we tend to forget and become oblivious of that which is right in front of us. This is why we have to be reminded, and not just reminded, reminded over and over again. Azan, who doesn't know namaz is first? Yet azan is called out. Zohar azan. Then again at asar time. Then again at maghrib time. Then again at isha time. Over and over and over again. Why? Because we tend to forget. We tend to become ghafil. We tend to become negligent. The whole of Quran is nasihat. Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would come. Many, many ahadith. We find expressions. Dullani ala amal. Yudkhilun il jannah. يُبَاعِدُنِي مِنَ النَّارِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مُرْنِي بِأَمْرٍ لَا أَسْأَلُ, لا أسأل عَنْ وَأَحَدًا بعدك. يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Advise me, show me something Something that will save me from Jahannam That will give me entry into Jannat يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Advise me something That I don't have to ask you anything else besides this We find many many times Sahaba would come to Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Seeking advice this occasion of Jumu'ah is a platform for the same thing, reminder. Today we are at that part of the year where many of us are in a holiday mood. Businessmen are in a period, we have to catch up. Whatever we didn't earn the whole year, now is the time to earn it. At this time we need to get our perspectives in order. We need to get our balance. We need advice. Luqman alayhi salam is that personality who has, who has given this title, Luqman Hakim, Luqman the wise, Hikmat, Hikmat, wisdom, this is, yeah, this is not something that you'll find on a street corner. This is a great ni'mat, a great bounty, a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah says, we will give hikmat and wisdom to whom we want. And the one to whom we give this, 
The one to whom we give this, when Allah speaks of dunya, what does Allah say? Mata'un qalil. Mata'un qalil. Valueless. Kasarabim biqi'a. Mata'ul ghurur. Deception. That is dunya, the wealth of this world in the eyes of Allah, that is something that you'll find on some street corner with no value. What is value? May yuridillahu bihi khayra yufaqihu fi deen When Allah gives someone the understanding and comprehension of deen, of Qur'an, when Allah blesses someone with hikmat, ulama kiram mufassirin, in the verse of the Qur'an, under this word hikmat, they give 29 different explanations as to what is hikmat. What is wisdom? Obviously we're not going to go into 29 different explanations. The crux, the understanding and the comprehension of Qur'an. The understanding and the comprehension of deen. This is valuable. Where Allah says, وَمَن يُؤْتَ hikma, فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا kathira." Dunya is mataun qalil, valueless. If Allah gives you hikmat, Allah gives you wisdom, Allah gives you the comprehension of deen, utiya khayran kathira, you have been given something of great value. Luqman, outwardly, Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, mentions, kana habashiya, Sudani, he was a black man, simple person, Sudanese background. One person one day came up to him, and said, Alasta kunta tar'i ma'il ghanam fi makani kadha wa kadha. Luqman, hundreds of students showing him great respect, listening, hanging on to every word of his advices. So one person comes up to him, says, Aren't you the same black man who with me used to look after sheep in the mountains? We were both poor, we had no name and fame. Ma balagha bika ma'ara. Aliyom. How is it? What has caused you to be elevated to this position that you are enjoying today? Where you have thousands of disciples, people are looking up towards you. What elevated you? Luqman alayhi salam, Luqman the wise, he turned to this person, he said, Yes, I am the same person you refer to. Allah elevated me. Why? Two qualities. He said, Sidqul hadith. Sidqul Hadith, when I spoke, I spoke the truth. When I spoke, I spoke the truth. Wasamtu amma la ya'anini. Abstaining from speaking about that which is not necessary. Abstention from unnecessary speech. Nuqman's famous saying, he said, Al ilmu zain. وَالسُّكُوتُ سَلَامَةٌ فَإِذَا نَتَقْتَ فَلَا تَكُنْ مِكْثَارًا مَا نَدَمْتُ عَلَى سُكُوتِي مَرَّةً وَلَكِنْ نَدَمْتُ عَلَى الْكَلَامِ مِرَارًا Beautifully. Beautifully he put it. He said knowledge is, an, is beauty. It's an indication of intelligence. And silence is protection. Hold your tongue. This holiday season, hold your tongue. When you speak also, don't speak unnecessarily. Don't speak too much. Speak what is relevant. Speak what is beneficial. And then beautifully he said, Ma in ala sukuti marratan. He said, I never regretted keeping quiet. Keeping my mouth shut, I never regretted. But there were many times when I spoke and regretted. This is just to give us a little bit of background. Luqman is that personality. Allah attests to his hikmat and wisdom in the Qur'an. Where Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ hikma." We granted Luqman hikmat, wisdom. His advices, I said, like I mentioned, the whole Qur'an is nasihat. Yet the advices of Luqman alayhi salam, many of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Qur'an. Luqman alayhi salam, this occasion of Juma time is very limited. But there is some, lot of times, like the other day one person came to me, he says, Mawlana, one is you ask person, you say to somebody, make dua for me. Nowadays, mashallah, we have an addition. We don't just say make dua, we say, Mawlana, make special dua. Make special dua. Amongst the advices of Luqman alayhi salam, there is a certain special advice, special advice 
right at the end of his life, time has come for Luqman to leave the world. He calls his son and he says, Usika bisitti khisal, Usika bisitti khisal, yajma'u fiha ilmul awwaleen wal akhireen. He says, Oh my beloved son, I want to tell you six things. I want to tell you six things. These six things are such, everything I have taught you. In fact, the knowledge of the past and the future are contained in these six things. We are always looking for shortcut. We are always looking for things to be made brief. Luqman alayhi salam, wallah, if you have to analyze the six things that he told his son at the end of his life, not one, not ten, not hundred, but thousands of verses of the Qur'an are found, the nature and the essence of thousands of verses of the Qur'an, thousands of ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are contained in these six advices. If we take them to heart, if we take them to heart, wallah, it will change the direction of our entire life. Unfortunately, many of us, we have our wepari mode, then we got our bayan mode. Bayan mode for many of us, Allah forgive us, is switch off mode. We're watching the clock, we're watching the time. Let it not be like that. Nasihat, advice, is something we should take to heart. We should analyze. Another bimari and sickness today is when we listen to advice, especially when sins are pointed out, weaknesses are pointed out, the entire focus of our gaze goes to the next person, goes to someone else. Yes, that is found in that one, that is found in that one, that is found in that one. Come out of that. That is shaitan's deception. You are not here to worry about what is found in somebody else. Look within yourself. Look within yourself. Apne aap ko muttaham samajna. Consider yourself to be guilty and everyone else to be innocent. My Nabi Islam gave us a beautiful prescription. He said, Dhunnu bil mu'minina khayra. Dhunnu bil mu'minina khayra. Ha- harbor good thoughts about your fellow Muslim. Don't judge him. Give him, put a positive interpretation on what he is doing. This is akhlaq. Shaitan will very easily get you into this mode of looking at others. Don't look at others, look at yourself. Coming back to the advice of Luqman alayhi salam. Six advices. First two advices, the meaning is very similar. I'm mentioning the Arabic. He said, لا تشغل قلبك إلى الدنيا إلا بقدر بقائك فيها. First advice. Second advice, وَعْمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ بِقَدْرِ بَقَائِكَ فِيهَا Literal translation of this, he said, Do not make your heart mashghul. Do not let your heart become entrapped in this dunya, except to the extent that you are going to remain in this dunya. How much time you got in this dunya? How much time you got left in this world? To that extent, engage your heart, engage your attention, engage your ambitions, again engage your desires for this dunya. وَعْمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ وَعْمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ وَعْمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ And work for your akhirat. Turn your attention to your akhirat. To what extent? بِقَدْرِ بَقَائِكَ فِيهَا Allahu Akbar. To how long you expect to live in akhirat. Dunya compared to Akhirat. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُعِدُوا فَفِي الْجَنَّةِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ عَطَاءً غَيْرَ مَجْذُوذٍ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شَقُوا فَفِي النَّارِ لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ I mentioned the verse in reverse order. Allah Ta'ala says, The one who enters into Jahannam, the one who enters into Jahannam, he will hear screeching, he will hear barking, there will be screams of terror and fear. How long is that life? How long is Akhirat? Quran says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا 
خالدين فيها forever and ever and ever وأما الذين سعدوا the one who has pleased Allah ففي الجنة he will enter into paradise he will enter into pleasures ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون for you in Jannah is whatever you desire whatever you ask from Allah سبحانه وتعالى how long how long خالدين فيها خالدين فيها forever and ever and ever that life is never coming to an end these two first expressions of Luqman alayhi salam contain within them the essence of life what is the essence of life hundred years ago this earth was running you and I were not here today we are here the earth is running the sun is rising the sun is setting industries are going on the myriad systems which Allah has put into place for the running and subsistence of this universe are all carrying on hundred years from now you and I are not going to be here this earth is still going to carry on what is the sabak not one of us came into this world to live not one of us came into this world to live by the qasam of my Allah every one of us came to die it's like when a person boards a bus or he boards a train what does he board the, what does it mean I took a flight I took a train I took a bus I boarded it to depart you're not going to remain on that bus you're not going to remain on that train you're not going to remain on that plane you board it to depart we came in this world to leave this world why have we made this world asal? Why have we made this life everything? I remember in 1993 our Jamaat was in Haripur in Pakistan. We went to one jail for Gash. Muslim country, 95% Muslim. Obviously majority of the residents, huge jail it was. Majority of the residents were Muslims. We met the director, call him the rector, the chief of the jail, mashallah, dressed in suit and tie, 65 year old man. Very military type of person, back was straight. Turned out to have a very adini inclination in him. So don't judge a book by its cover. Outwardly you look, this man is the epitome of western tradition. But when we met him, the message comes completely opposite. First thing he said when they appointed me as chief of this jail, I wanted to have hips classes. I wanted to introduce Talim of advanced Islamic learning. But he says the sad reality, Muslim country, Muslim jail, he says 95% couldn't even read the Kalima properly. That is the extent of Dini Jahalat. Then sometimes in Gash, you give, want to give the advice. Before you can say anything, that person starts telling you something. So I remember this happened in 1993, more than about 30 years ago. Yet before we could say anything, he told me, listen, I want to tell you one story. I said, what is the story? He said there was this king. Amongst his subjects, there was one person who was ghabi. Ghabi means mentally challenged. Very, very foolish. Not, worth of, not worthy of doing anything productive. Very fo a, a, a fool. Couldn't get any employment. Went to the king, he said, help me. The king said, listen, you are so foolish... You are no good to me, no good to anyone else. What job can I possibly give you? But nevertheless, the king took pity on him. He said, take this axe and go and look in my entire kingdom. Go and find somebody who is more foolish than you. If you can find anybody more foolish than you, give him this axe and come and take your payment from me. Now this man goes. Five or six months pass. He can't find anybody that is more foolish than him. In the interim, the king becomes very ill, terminally ill. He thinks to himself, the king was kind to me, let me go and visit him. This man is on his deathbed now. He enters the court of the king. The king is in the last gasp of life. Sees the king full of regret, sorrow, grief. What happened? Why are you so sad? This man was foolish. He, couldn't, he didn't do the sums. He didn't fully comprehend the challenge that was facing this king. Death is now imminent. So he says to the king, why are you so aggrieved? What is the problem? He says, there is a long journey in front of me. I am going, I am never ever coming back. I have made no preparations for this journey that lies ahead of me. So he says, king, you've got this palace, you've got all this wealth, you've got everything at your disposal, why didn't you send it ahead? You say you are not coming back. How long did you know about this journey? So the king says, I knew about it for a long time, it was imminent, my departure was imminent, I knew I had to go. You had everything. 
You made no preparation. He says, no, I made no preparation. What stopped you? You didn't know about it. It happened suddenly. He says, no, I knew about it. I knew about it. I knew it was imminent. I still made no preparation. He says, why? Why? What stopped you? Why didn't you make preparation? The king is silent. Then this rabi, foolish man, takes the axe off his shoulder and says, King, you need to pay me because you have to take this tax, this axe because as far as I am concerned, you are more foolish than me. So I said to this person, the story you are giving us is relevant. Whether it occurred or not, Allah knows best. But practical reality of this life. I said to him, I'm digressing. I said, normally from your appearance, we would have been cautious about what to speak to you, yet you are giving us valuable advices like this. What is your background? He says, listen, don't just look at me like that. When I was 18 years of age, I went four months in the path of Allah. I spent four months in tabligh, suit and tie, 65 year old man. No sign of sunnah on him, yet... He had spent four months in the path of Allah. He said, from that day till today, I haven't spent a single day out in the path of Allah. Some people feel that what was the benefit? You went for three days, you went for 40 days. What was the benefit? Wallah, there is benefit. Wallah, there is benefit. Wallah, there is benefit. The 65-year-old man said to us, looked us straight in the face. He said, from that day onwards till today, I never spent another day in tabligh. But I can say with absolute conviction, because of that four months, I make my five times salah with Jamaat. Secondly, 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 he said, because of that four months, and this particularly in Pakistan, you know, there's a common joke. They say Pakistan is the second most corrupt country in the world. They're supposed to be the first, but they cheated in that also. Corruption and bribery is rife, particularly amongst government officials. Today we shouldn't be pointing the finger at Pakistan. We know what's going on in our own back door. But that's a separate, separate issue. But, so he said the second thing, I spent four months in the path of Allah, I can say with absolute conviction, I have never accepted one penny of haram, I don't accept bribery at all. Wallah, that statement if he was speaking the truth, if he was speaking the truth in that environment, makes this man a wali of Allah. Don't judge a book by its cover, but the sabak, the lesson, every day we are passing by the graveyard, whether you are going to work, whether you are going just on some shopping errand, just up the road is one graveyard. How many graveyards we pass by? What is the sabak and lesson that we are taking? If there's a hundred people standing in front of you, ask, ask this question to those hundred people, that by how long have you lived in this world? You'll get hundred different answers. Ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years, sixty years. Hundred different answers you'll get. That's the first question. Ask the second question. How much time you got left? How much time you got left in this world? What answer will come? No guarantee. I got no guarantee. I got no... I got no guarantee. Your akhirat is forever. Your dunya is no guarantee. Yet, one investment, then another investment, then another investment. The coffer gets full, then full, and then full. Like Quran describes it. Kasarabim biqi'a. Yahsabuhu dhamanu ma'a. Like a desert dweller. He sees water. He's running. Running for the water. Running for the mal. Running for the dunya. When he arrives there, it was a mirage. Trick of light. Now he sees it further. He carries on running. And then running. And then running. And then running. And what happens? Hatta. Ida jahadakumul maut. Then it is maut. Then it is too late. Then the que- then then what is the claim? What is the call? What is the pukar? What is the nida? Rabbir jiun. Oh my Allah, send me back. Now I realize. Now I realize how many times were you not reminded? On your phone today, janaza after asar, janaza after maghrib, janaza 10 o'clock this morning, janaza tomorrow, janaza tomorrow morning, this time the mayit will be picked up, that time the mayit will be picked up. Pass by the graveyard, see who is in that graveyard. Those same people, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, politician, whether it's an illiterate, those same people, they also used to drive past the same graveyard. Some in their fast, fast cars, some in a motorcycle, some laughing, some joking. What was the pukar? What is the dua that we are taught? When you go to the graveyard, Assalamu alaikum, Ya ahla al quburi min al muslimin, Ya ghfirullahu lana wa lakum, Antum salafuna, Wa nahnu bil athar. 
Peace be upon you, residents of these graves. May Allah forgive you, may Allah forgive us. Antum salafuna wa nahnu bil athar. You are gone ahead, we are going to follow you. When you read that janaza namaz in the back of this masjid, don't just look at that janaza. Understand that the next janaza is you. You are going to follow that person. You are going to have to leave behind that lovely tile bathroom. You are going to leave behind that beautiful luxurious home. You are going to leave behind that jaidat and that investments that you amassed. You are going to hand it over to someone else. And that clothing which you hired a tailor to cook to sew specially for you. You needed a certain type of fabric, a certain type of perfume. You are going to go in unsewn cloth. That lovely bathroom, lovely house, lovely lounge, lovely furniture imported from Italy and France and wherever your financial means were. That eventual abode is that dirty, filthy hole in the ground. You looked for the best amenities. What will be your last bath? You won't even be able to walk. You will be carried. Is that not the reality? Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala nu, he sees a janaza going past. Someone asks him, Abu Darda, whose janaza is that? Whose janaza is that? What does the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu say? He says, my brother, that is your janaza. That janaza you're asking me about is your janaza. And if you don't want, you don't like what I'm saying, take it as my janaza. If you don't like what I'm saying, take it as my janaza. How much longer are we going to be in denial? How much longer is it going to be this relentless rat race? What they say, I'm doing it, if it's not for himself, he says, I'm doing it for the future for the future of my children. Ensure your future. Sort your tomorrow out. That advice is 100% correct. Today we've taken the wrong meaning. What is the future? Future is not this dunya. Future is your akhirat. Future is your qabr. Future is your jannat. Sort your future out. Sort the future of your children out. What does that mean? That doesn't mean run behind this dunya. That doesn't mean sell your akhirat at the expense of this dunya. Future is akhirat. It means strive for akhirat. Coming back to the advice of Sayyidina Luqman alayhi salam. Listen now in the light of what I have said. What were the first two things he said? لا تشغل قلبك إلى الدنيا إلا بقدر بقائك فيها Do not engage your heart in this dunya except to the extent that you are going to remain in this dunya. All hundred, what was the answer? We don't know, we don't know guarantee. So to that extent, وَعَمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ وَعَمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ Work for your akhirat بِقَدْرِ بَقَائِكَ فِيهَا to the extent that you will remain in akhirat. This is akal mandi. This is samajdari. Today what they say, the Molanas do not know what they are talking about. What are they talking about? They have to be realistic. We have to have life planning. We have to have this, we have to have that. That personality, that personality by the qasam of my Allah, all the intelligentsia of this world put together compared to his intelligence, what they have is not even an iota of a fraction compared to his intelligence. He was asked this question, Man akyasun nas wa ahzamun nas Oh my Nabi, tell me, who is the most intelligent man? Who is the most pers- person with the greatest understanding? What does he answer? He says, Aktharuhum dhikran lil maut Aktharuhum dhikran للموت وأشدهم استعدادا له أولئك هم الأكياس ذهبوا بشرف الدنيا والآخرة he says the man who will remember his death the most and the one who will prepare for his mort and his death the most he is the most intelligent amongst you amongst you أولئك هم الأكياس they are the intelligent ones ذهبوا بشرف الدنيا والآخرة they will have akhirat in front of them. Sachai, amanadari. They will be honest. They will have integrity. They will work to please Allah. They will have the fear of Allah. What will happen? They will get akhirat and Allah will give them dunya also. What is the converse? Continue in this life of ghaflat. Continue in this life of denial. Constantly ignore the reminders. There were two people that came for one janaza. The one brother said to the other one, he says, you know what, let's go to the qabr I say, hey brother, you know what, I'm so busy. I got my container coming, I got this happening, I got that. With great difficulty, I just made it to this janaza. I need to go. I need to go. Jumps in his car and down the road, what happens? 
Allah protect us. Accident. That same person who didn't have time to go to the graveyard. Didn't have time to go to the graveyard. That same evening went to the graveyard right up to Qiyamah. That is the reality. وَعْمَلْ لِلْآخِرَةِ بِقَدْرِ بَقَائِكَ فِيهَا Work for your akhirat to the extent that you intend remaining in akhirat. For dunya, how long you are going to remain here? To that extent you should work. Future planning, this is future planning. The third advice, we're running out of time. It's a public holiday, we're taking a few minutes. وَأَتِعَ رَبَّكَ وَأَتِعَ رَبَّكَ بِقَدْرِ حَاجَتِكَ إِلَيْهِ وَاللَّهِ these words of advice that Luqman alayhi salam has given are worthy of being written down in gold. He says, third advice, how much do you need Allah? How much do you need Allah? Wallah, for every blinking of my eye, for every breath of air, for every morsel of food, that to swallow it, to take it into my mouth, I need Allah. To swallow it, I need Allah. For it to be digested, I need Allah. For me to relieve myself, I need Allah. For me to sleep, I need Allah. For me to wake up, I need Allah. Wallah, you and I, every second, countless different ways we are in need of Allah. Allah calls out, Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqarawu ilallah. Oh people, every one of you is fakir, useless, bankrupt, zero before Allah. You are totally dependent on Allah. So he says, to the extent that you need Allah, obey Allah to that extent. Obey Allah to the extent that you need Allah. Today you think you need other people. You think you need society. You're trying to please everyone else. In your weddings, my, make, your shah, make your wedding simple. Photography, haram. Different music, haram. Intermingling, haram. All types of haram. Why? It's expected. Who are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing? On that card you'll write the Bismillah rahmani rahim On that card you'll make dua for barakat. Then you will do everything possible. Everything possible to anger Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My respected brothers, beautifully, obey Allah. Obey Allah to the extent that you need Allah. Find Allah and wallah you need no one else. What is wanum min Allahi akbar? Fourth advice, وَلْيَكُنْ سَعْيُكَ فِي فِكَاكِ رَقَبَتِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَلْيَكُنْ سَعْيُكَ فِي فِكَاكِ Allahu Akbar. How beautifully he puts it. He says, Oh my son, oh my son, till you are totally convinced that you are safe from Jahannam, do not ever stop making an effort to save yourself from Jahannam. Innaha lava nazata lishawa tadu man adbara watawalla inna ladina kafaru bi ayatina sofa nuslihim nara kulama nadija juluduhum baddal nahum juludan gayraha liadukul adab fi samum wahamim wazil mi yahmum la baridi wala karim wasuku ma an hamima fakat. Such descriptions, many more verses, no time. Such descriptions of the azab of Jahannam Allah gives in the Quran. He says, Oh my son, till you are not convinced that you are free from that Jahannam, relentlessly work to save yourself from Jahannam. Fifth advice, وَلْيَكُنْ جُرْأَتُكَ عَلَى الْمَعَاصِي بِقَدْرِ صَبْرِكَ فِي النَّارِ And oh my son, if you want to make guna, if you want to sin, then have courage to sin to the extent that you are able to bear the azab of Jahannam. Sinning, Allah is merciful, but hadith is there. If Allah doesn't forgive, if Allah doesn't forgive, my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa passed by two graves. He said, both the residents of these graves are engaged in the azab of qabr. They are involved in the azab of qabr. They asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? He said, the first person was careless with urine droplets. Paki na paki, don't take it lightly. The first person was careless with urine droplets. He said, the second person, the second person used to engage in tail carrying. What we call chugal khori. Carry from here to there. And today with the cell phone is to thousands of people. My Nabi Salaam was shown Jahannam. He saw people with nails 
made out of copper, long, long nails. They were cutting open the flesh of their faces, renting the flesh of their chests. He asked, what is this, subhanallah? What is this? What, why, why, why is this azab being given to them? The answer was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These were people that used to do ghibat. These were people that used to do chugal khori, ghibat, backbiting. Ghibat, backbiting, carrying tails. He said, the wealth of which the... The zakat is not paid, will be turned into a snake and will wrap itself around your neck on the day of Jahannam, on the day of Qiyamah. Like that, many, many ahadith. What is the sabab? What is the lesson? Allah's disobedience, Allah's, Allah is very merciful. The door of Tawbah is open. But Allah's disobedience will lead to Jahannam. So He says, Oh my son, وَلْيَكُنْ جُرْأَتُكَ عَلَى الْمَعَاسِي بِقَدْرِ صَبْرِكَ فِي النَّارِ Be courageous in sinning to the extent that you have sabr over the azab of Jahannam. We are given a guarantee. Time is limited. We are given a guarantee. My Allah says. My Allah says. We want a holiday message, New Year message, whatever message. Take this message. Take this message. My Allah says. وَمَنْ أَسْتَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا And there is no one more truthful than my Allah. My Allah says. My Allah says. My Allah says. Read your five times salah. Read your five times salah with jamaat. And I take an oath, I will give you jannah. I take an oath, I will give you Jannat. Vacation is not vacation from Salah. Holiday is not holiday from Salah. Business is not business from Salah. This is the earning. This is the effort. Final nasihat, we've run out of time. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ أَن تَعْصِيَ مَوْلَاكَ فَطْلُبْ مَكَانًا لَا يَرَاك He says, oh my son, if your mind is made up, that zina you are going to do, that haram, you are going to do. Your mind is made up. Your mind is made up. You're not going to resist the temptation. Then I beg you, my son, find some place to do it where no one can see you. Where neither Allah nor His Malaika can see you. If you want to do the sin, then at least that much. At least today, even a little child, if someone is looking, the wrong which they were supposed to do, they won't do. We find what they put... Person is driving on the highway, 140, 150, 160. Hey, someone, camera is coming by. Camera is straight away. Half the time the camera is not even working. What happens? Immediately hits the brakes. Why? Someone is looking. Someone is looking. I'm going to get caught. Someone is looking. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu late one night, patrolling the streets of Medina. The homes were not like our homes. Simple homes, small homes. Conversation is going on. The mother is remonstrating with the daughter. لماذا لم تخلط الماء حليب بالماء؟ Why aren't you mixing water in the milk? أمير المؤمنين عمر نهى عن هذا الغش prohibited us from this type of deception. A Muslim does not deceive. He reveals the fault in his goods. He doesn't hide. She says to her mother, أمير المؤمنين عمر prohibited this غش, this deception. Allahu Akbar. What does the mother say? Where is Umar? Umar can't see you now. Umar is not here. What does this young girl say? In kana Umaru la yarana, fa in Rabba Umar yarana. Oh my mother, Umar may not be able to see us. Umar may not be able to see us, but where are we going to hide from the rub of Umar? Where are we going to hide from the rub of Umar? مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ وَلَا أَدْنَى مِن ذَلِكْ وَلَا أَكْثَرَ إِلَّا هُوَ مَعَهُمْ أَيْنَمَا كَانُوا ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ Three people whispering in one corner. Allah says, I am the fourth. Four whispering, Allah says, I am the first. Wherever you are, Allah is with you. Thumma yunabbiuhum bima amilu yawm al Allah says, that day you didn't have sharab, you didn't have shame for your Allah. Allah says, on that day I'm going to reveal in front of you. The Allah that gave you the eyes to see, the ear to hear, the heart to beat, the hand to grasp, the feet to walk. That same Allah says, that day is coming, I will reveal everything. Have sharam for your Allah. Have sharam for your Allah. Vacation is not vacation from Allah. 
Ida aratta antasiya mulaka. Oh my son, if your mind is made up to do that guna, fatlub makana la yaraka. Look for some place where Allah and His malaika cannot see you. Wallah, my respected brothers, we've run out of time. These six advices, six advices that Luqman alayhi salam, he says correctly, yajtamiyo fiha ilmul awalina wal akhirin. The combined knowledge of the past and future is contained in these six advices. Take them to heart. Take them to heart. Inshallah, the entire direction of our life will change. Allah give us tawfiq wa akhidah.